Hi, good evening, everybody. And hope all of you are doing good. On behalf of the Advertising Club of Madras, it's my pleasure to welcome you all to a Gyan series meeting, or rather an e-Gyan series minus the high tea. To set the context for this evening, uh, you know, I remember watching this movie, The Looming Tower, which is about the 9-11 attack and the crash of the Twin Tower. But more than that, it was about how two federal agencies, the FBI and CIA, work in isolation. They function from the same office and with one shared common objective of protecting national security. But they're constantly with rift at each other, fight, fight with each other, personal egos come into play, information is stashed, hidden, and nothing is shared. As marketing communication and advertising professionals, are there any lessons for us uh, to learn from this? Clients today work with multiple agency partners, but do we work together? Do we work as cohesive teams? Do we see each other as threats or do we, uh, do we complement each other? For example, does a creative agency give it all to ex execute an idea if it has come from the PR agency? Or will a media agency go a step further and execute a media innovation if it has come from the digital agency and vice versa? So how can we diffuse this turf wars and fix the silos? To discuss this a little more deeper and possibly find some uh, answers or directions, I will now request Ashwini Gangal, Executive Editor AFAX, to introduce an eminent panel and keep the proceedings as much as possible integrated. Thank you and over to you, Ashwini. Thank you, thank you, Anbu. Wow, what a fantastic uh, introduction. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, moderate this lovely webinar. Uh, hello, big hello to the audience out there. Um, we'll make it as interesting as uh, possible for all of you. Uh, welcome all my panelists. Uh, we're gathered here today to discuss a topic that just doesn't seem to go out of fashion uh, decade after decade. Okay, so uh, we have to acknowledge that, uh, that this is a topic that keeps getting recycled every decade and we're here to discuss it in the context that we are in today. It is basically about the integration of all the various verticals of marketing communication versus a more siloized approach, which, and we see both. So we're here to discuss one versus the other, and um, we're here to figure out and surmise why we don't see more integration of all the various verticals that comprise marketing communication today, and why we still struggle with silos. Now, before we jump into the discussion, I would like to introduce uh, one by one my eminent uh, panelists. I will start with um, Yesudas. Yesudas runs a business transformation venture called YNA Transformation. He brings with him 28 years of industry experience, and he has worked in the past with agencies like Vizium, RK Swami Video, and Initiative, among others. Then I'd like to introduce Pratap. Pratap Suthan, or Patch, as we know him, runs a full service creative agency called Bang in the Middle. Um, he comes with 30 plus years of industry experience, uh, and he has worked with large agencies such as Chael, Gray, and Mudra, among others, in the past. Uh, next, I'll come to Venkat. Venkat runs an agency. It's a, it's a brand agency for the digital world. It's called Tidal7. And he also has around 30 years of experience, most of it in advertising. And he has worked at large agencies like JWT, Euro RSCG, Leo Burnett, and RAP in the past. And last, but certainly not the least by any stretch, we've got Mark. Mark is the brand marketer on this panel, and uh, he is marketing director at Nippon Paint. He comes with 17 years of robust marketing experience across brand marketing, trade marketing, regional marketing, and also key account management. He has worked with companies like Videocon and Coca-Cola in the past. So welcome, warm welcome to all my esteemed panelists. And before I start asking my questions, in the order in which I introduced my panelists, I would like them to take two minutes or two and a half minutes each and briefly give their opening remarks. And by way of opening remarks, I'd like them to answer the question of relevance and talk about what this topic looks like from their unique vantage point and why it's relevant to us in 2020. Why are we here this evening discussing 
silos versus integrated communication at all. So we can start with the ASFS. Hi, Ashley. Thank you. Can, can you, am, I, am I audible? Can you guys hear Absolutely. me? Absolutely. Yes. All right. Fantastic. Thank you for the warm introduction. Um, let me just flip this a little uh, and, uh, you know, talk about the cause than the, than the symptoms. You know, the, the way that we're looking at communication now and integrated communication, to my mind, uh, particularly introduced me as a transformation business transformation consultant. Now, in my mind, it's a it's a symptom. It's not the cause. The cause lies somewhere else. And I believe for all the analysis that we've done, about 20% of marketing dollars today actually go into leaky buckets because of disintegration. That's the analysis that we have, uh, mm -hmm. and we can challenge on that. Uh, not only that, we also believe that brands lose a great deal of opportunity in terms of making uh, and delivering an experience to customers because of disintegration. But unfortunately, the integration that agencies think is integration is not what integration is. That's the clips that I wanted to actually give uh, in my opening remark. Um, I'll actually begin with a, a personal like, example on this. Uh, mm -hmm. I was at this hotel in, uh, in a different city uh, a couple of months back just before the lockdown. This is a hotel chain that I used to use when I was in the corporate life. Can't afford that now. Uh, currently, you've got to look, look at booking.com and go for the cheapest hotels. Uh, so I landed up at the hotel after a long hiatus. And uh, they welcomed me and they actually said that, oh, we've decided to upgrade you because you've been a regular patron for us. We, you know, put you different, putting you in a different category room than the one that you paid for. And I basically got pretty happy. And uh, that night, at, as an active social media user, I kind of tweeted or, or put a post on them saying, look at it, customer-centric approach, right? It's, it's great. And the agency that handled social media for the brand picked that up because uh, there is an agency that handles ORM operate, online reputation management. Picked that up and said, oh, thank you very much for talking about it, et cetera. But the next morning, I check out and I get a mail uh, from a different system. It says, can you rate us on a scale of one to five? I said, I just did that last night. I just did that last night, right? So you have systems which are built in silos. And as a result of which, what's really happening is that, uh, you know, something that people talk about transformation, digital transformation is not happening. What's actually essentially happening is process automation. Your processes are really automated and there's no transformation. And as a result of which the fluid journey that the consumers are going through is not being tracked. And because of that, you also don't know the frictions that consumers go through. And what do agencies do in terms of integration? That's a belief uh, that agencies have. Okay, I create a 30 second ceremony on TV now. Uh, now let me make a, adapt that to a print, uh, to a digital, to a cinema. And that becomes an integrated communication because at the end of it, they're delivering the same message to people, right? So that becomes the integration as far as the agencies are concerned. But the integration that people are missing out on is the fact that platforms or channels are moved from single to multi to cross to omni. And there is at best an API that's interconnecting all of them. And there is no way that for you to actually understand, actually understand the customer journey. So if you don't understand the customer journey, you don't become customer first in your approach. All of these opportunities are being completely lost out. And the communication that you create has no value because just imagine that mail that came to me that morning had no value to me because I said, you lost out an opportunity of talking to me in a continuous language. If you pick that up and say, thank you for reviewing us last night, here is a 5% you know, discount coupon for you to have lunch with us. It could have been an experience that they would create with the consumer ongoing. Yeah, they lost that opportunity. And I can quote many more examples like that actually going along. Now, what's really happening in the in the globe is that I'll take a minute, half a minute more. The globe is that there's a conversation that's on return on advertising spend, uh, which is a great conversation. ROAS is a conversation that's taking center stage across the globe. Uh, now, if agencies don't get onto the bandwagon, what's going to happen to India particularly is that we are talking about 500 million consumers on digital today, which is going to be a billion by 2023. That's exact. That's a, that's the expectation. So even if we are about 750 million consumers on internet by 2024, that's a large amount of size, that's large size of consumers that we're talking about, right? And if you don't have analytics at scale, and if you don't really figure out their lives and their journey, the fluid journey that they really go through, agencies are actually going to be disrupted. And the Accenture's and the likes of Accenture's are obviously going to come in with analytics at scale, and they're going to disrupt the agency. So there are some suggestions that I have for agencies, simple human suggestion, which we can probably talk about later. So this is in my way, 
uh, my opening remark is that we are probably missing the bus uh, in terms of integration. Okay, great. Thank you, Yesu. I will come back to you on a few points that you made. Uh, interesting points. Thank you. Uh, Pat, can we have your opening remarks, please? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So, uh, you know, when he said uh, that agencies will miss the bus, I think we have missed the bus. We've missed the bus. We've missed the bus stand. We've missed the roads. We are somewhere else. And, and I'll tell you why. Because, you know, in the earlier days, uh, communication was limited in terms of the advertising mediums that you had. You know, you would uh, read a newspaper, you would watch television, you would listen to the radio. I mean, the inputs were different. You know, you would obviously occasionally uh, glance at your outdoor medium. And then came along uh, the internet, which sort of combined everything. You could read it, you could watch it, you could listen to it, etc., etc. And then came the third there on top of that, which is the interactive thing. So uh, uh, from a broadcast medium where you could stand up and talk to people, suddenly people started talking back to you, right? Now this is where agencies let go because they didn't know how to start handling a consumer who talks back, okay? That was one. And, uh, and again, what is also happening today is once the internet age came in, you also had different kinds of platforms that came up. Okay, now you, today, today we have Facebook, we have Instagram, we have LinkedIn, we have Snapchat, you name it, you know, there's YouTube, right? There's so many platforms and people have become kind of segregated. Oh, sorry, you know, they have gone away from the uh, thing and concentrated on different platforms, depending on the ages, depending on where you stay, depending on what you like, et cetera, et cetera. And plus within each vertical or within each platform, there are multiple things. Today on social media, on, on Facebook, for example, if you look at it, there are about 35 different things you can do, it, do with it. Maybe 40 different things you can do with it. From posts to gifs to carousels to films, right? All sorts of things. And every platform is innovating every day. So currently what is happening is if you have hundred rupees to spend, you don't know where to put your monies. There are far too many things happening there and your audience is scattered, right? I mean, earlier we used to say advertising is such a simple thing, right? It is not rocket science. Bloody hell, today it's become rocket science. And I'll, and I'll tell you why it has become rocket science because there are so many different aspects. As a brand manager today, right? Uh, if you were even launching a chocolate from, from retail sp space, right? From outdoors, from BTL, from stuff on the packaging, the interactive stuff, right? You have tags on them, you have RFID tags on them, you have your internet pages happening, you have emailers, you have banners, you have YouTube ads, you have passovers, runovers, takeovers of pages, you have Instagram, you have grids happening, you have films happening. Everything is happening. Where the hell do you think you want to put your money? And do you think any agency today by itself, talk about small agencies, talk about big agencies. No agency today is built to handle the profusion of platforms and experiences and things that are going out there. Uh, I mean, to me, uh, Nippon is a great example. I have always seen great advertising from them. Uh, I have judged Pepper Awards for many years. So I have a judge at, uh, at Madras at Club. The kind of work, that is one integrated brand, you know, for the money that they spend from their IPL association onwards to all sorts of things that they do. It's a, it's a brand that comes together in at least, I think they, I mean, the way I read that brand and how they do it is that they concentrate on three, four mediums where they think they get the maximum bang for, for the buck and they spend over there and people see it. Unlike spreading it across everything. I mean, you can't put a drop of milk into a bucket of water and say, look, let me make chai for you. You can never make chai out of a bucket of water with a drop of milk. You cannot. Either you should be somebody like a Nike or an Emirates, you know, or some of those big brands who have enormous advertising budgets, right? Or you have to be very sensible. Today, every brand and every client has access to every advertising platform, right? And your consumers are spread thin, like diluted water. They're all over the place. So we are in for disintegrated living. We are in for disintegrated agencies because none of us have the skills to do everything that today's audience or today's media demands. That is what I have to say. Okay, wow, wow. I will come back to you on a few of those points, Pat. Sure. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. 
Yeah, Venkat, can we have your opening remarks, please? Venkat has gone quiet. No, he's uh, muted. Okay. I just unmuted myself. Right. Okay. <laughs> so those are some really great points from uh, Yesu, who you know talked about essentially touch point. Uh, you know, integrating across every touch point, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, Pratap as well with um, you know basically he sort of. Uh, laid the nail on the, you know, integrated agency at some level. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, so, yeah, so I, I have pretty much similar things to say, um, because I think the opinion is uh, kind of there for everybody to see. Uh, of course, I have a slightly different uh, way of saying it. Uh, ever since the disaggregation of agencies started in the 90s, um, agency relationships with clients has actually uh, been going south, you know, down the food chain and so on and so forth. Uh, and when we look at 2020, you know, I mean, the picture is that you have tons of agencies. Many claim to be integrated agencies. They are somewhat integrated. Many claim to be specialists. But if you sort of, you know, um, break it down you and you talk to them, everybody's willing to do everything, right? Uh, they found find a way of begging, borrowing, stealing specialists, partners and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and kind of knitting it together. What's happened actually over this period of time is that um, one, the entire agency world is obviously full of people who want to make their sort of agency more sort of uh, commercially wealthy, wealthy uh, more famous and so on and so forth. So they are chasing uh, vanity metrics, they are chasing scam awards and so on and so forth, but a lot of fake metrics that actually help them meet their business agendas. On the other hand, uh, the clients have actually found lots of agencies to divide and rule, right? And therefore, clients are saying, if you won't do it in two days, I will get it done from the other guy, right? And if you don't do it for 100 rupees, the other guy is willing to do it. So you decide, right? So pretty much everybody is in it for his or her own self, right? So what's happening is perspective is getting killed, right? brand thinking, long-term brand building capability, and so on and so forth, are all being taken to the coolers. It's extremely important to reintegrate, right? While I agree with Pratap that no individual agency can potentially deal with everything that's available to market with, it is possible to actually work with agencies having the skills to deliver on the most influential few media. So if you pick TV, you pick, pick print, you pick digital, maybe direct and a little bit of you know, event marketing, you will cover 80, 90% of what's most influential, right? And therefore it's possible for agencies to have that much of center of plate in them, right? I believe integration is the way forward so that you bring back brand thinking because that's getting really killed in, in the process. There's one more point over there, which is to actually have integrated people. I'm sure people like Pratap and Yesu, and I, you know, I don't, I, I fancy Mark's been a client kind of person, so I don't know about his story, but you know, all of us have actually, you know, done pretty much everything when there was an integrated agency. So I can say for myself that I've been, you know, I've done client servicing, of course, which is classical. I've been a strategic planner for a part. I've been a media planner. I've done everything, including bringing coffee to the boardroom, right? Uh, and over the last sort of 10, 12 years, I actually moved, uh, you know, after having been a director with Leo Burnett to actually being in digital for the last 10, 12 years. I mean, I'm sure stories that Pratap and Yesu might tell you would be similar. So you need people who've actually seen multiple dimensions, know how individual things work, understand them to a reasonable amount of depth for such people to actually bring in perspective. So I believe both integration from an agency structure perspective, as also people. Because otherwise, when people are being brought up in silos, they don't really see the big, big picture. So it's the trees and the woods sort of thing, right? And that is something which you see as a part of the entire environment right now. That's what I wanted to say. That's fantastic, Venkat. You give me a lot of points to come back to uh, later in the discussion. But first, let's hear Mark's opening remarks. Well, uh, Ashwini, you know, after yeah. hearing the other three panelists, there's yeah. Uh, very little that there's to add, uh, but it's pretty obvious that uh, today a marketer's job is getting tougher and tougher. Mm. You know, media is getting just more complicated, much more cluttered. 
And there's so much of data that we have to process and analyze before taking a decision on, you know, uh, spending allocations. And yes, yeah. importantly, there is an ROI that we have to deliver for every spend. It's yeah. important that we have specialist partners, you know, to support and to help the brand marketers uh, to make the best choices and to make it quick. And, uh, you know, uh, while, we, while we do have many, uh, you know, uh, specialist agency partners, it's extremely important here to maintain the brand communication, you know, in a very consistent manner. And when I say this, I mean, uh, uh, it has to come out in terms of the brand uh, tonality, uh, the overall personality of the brand has to remain consistent. You can't keep changing it because that will confuse the, uh, the consumer at the end of the day. And that's where I feel, you know, the whole integrated communication bit plays a very important role. Beyond this, uh, for individual campaigns, uh, you know, you can be integrated, you can be disintegrated. You stuck? To bring yes. everything together where you have ah, to have the impact. Hmm. where you don't really need to go, you know, whole hog. You can just use maybe one or two of the levers to get the message delivered. Mm -hmm. okay. And that's where it is. So integrated communication is more from a brand perspective to ensure that the communication gets the, uh, the, the consumer gets the right communication delivered to him. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Thank you for that, Mark. Uh, I'll stay with you and I'll ask you another question. You know, it, in the course of my career as a, as a journalist, I've interviewed lots of brand marketing heads across product groups, whether it's FMCG or Auto or Telco, what have you. And at some point or the other, everybody has either told me directly or has alluded to this. Uh, and that is that agencies tend to be very territorial. They, they're very territorial about their own work. And this is what leads to turf wars, as Anbu said in his uh, opening remarks. So um, while there's no value judgment on agencies about that, maybe they have no choice and we know why that happens because it's all about credit and turf is important. Um, but the point I'm trying to get at is that in the process, silos are created and it's just a byproduct of that. So can we really help it? And uh, as a marketer, uh, Mark, what do you have to say to that? Is, it, is the onus then on uh, agencies to not be territorial and that's also utopic? Well, uh, you know, yes, uh, agencies can be territorial, uh, but so can the client teams. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you, you have product managers, you have brand managers, uh, you have the, the media planners, uh, you have the digital team, and more often than not, uh, they don't see eye to eye. Uh, mm -hmm. But that part of it can be easily handled by the client because it is kind of internal. It's tougher to manage it when the agencies, you know, kind of operate in, uh, in this kind of a manner. The problem does exist, you know, irrespective if you deal with several small agencies handling different things or one large agency, you know, with different internal verticals uh, 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 for different, uh, you know, uh, execution mm -hmm. or, or, yeah, you know, even, even, even if it is uh, geog geographically a problem, even if it is a single execution which is required, radio, for example, and uh, uh, there is something that you want to do in Chennai and there's something that you want to execute in maybe Bangalore. Hmm. There is literally a, a battle which happens between these two agencies who are basically the same organization. Oh. And I've been through an experience where uh, literally we stopped working with them because of a, a, such an incident. So, you know, the agencies really lost out on that and we lost out on a lot of time, things like that. So yes, turf wars do exist. Okay. It is there on both sides. Yeah. A lot of the onus is there on the client side to set a culture, you know, with the agencies to ensure there is a proper communication. We do this in the, you know, uh, we have joint brand uh, workshops. We have joint briefing sessions for our various agencies mm -hmm. to ensure that the right communication is going across. And everybody knows, you know, this is a joint objective which we have to uh, achieve. Uh, mm -hmm. But yes, that is a, a, a str eternal struggle, I would say. Yeah. How would the agencies uh, react to this, Pat, Venkat, especially Venkat, because you also said that clients have this divide and rule thing going. Uh, so this is pretty much uh, in co conflict with what uh, Mark is saying. So how would you respond to that? Venkat, you go first. 
Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I, uh, my, I had bad uh, uh, internet connection um, and I couldn't um, you know, hear much of what was said. So that's why I got myself another dongle or whatever to try and fix that. So I didn't hear your question, my apologies. Okay. Yeah, so if you could, uh, can you repeat just one sentence out of it so I can sort of yeah. catch yeah. up? And then, yeah. it's, it's basically uh, to pick tough up uh, from what Tough was and what you said in your opening remarks, Venkat, about uh, divide and rule. Because Mark here is saying that, uh, you know, agencies do tend to get territorial, not just agency X versus Y, even within agency X, the Chennai team versus the Bombay team. And yeah. then you can't help but have silos because of this kind of attitude. Um, but that's in conflict with what you said, uh, with the um, divide and rule. So how would you respond to that? Okay, is Pratap going first or I need to go first? <laughs> you go first, you go first, don't worry. Okay, so no, so the, that, that's like a complete reality, right? So in fact, I'll just give you an example. So, you know, you know, I've been running a, you know, I used to run Tribal ADB, uh, mm -hmm. you know, as part of my previous job as well, right? So we've done work with, uh, you know, mainline agencies because I used to now be digital or whatever, you know, um, and um, we worked with Lintas and uh, Jay Walter and Ogilvy and everybody else who used to handle brands, um, very often Unilever ones and stuff like that. Um, and uh, we used to work pretty, pretty well with them. So uh, I don't think uh, there has, you know, ever been an issue with actually getting consistent communication together, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are brand managers out there who are actually looking after that, right? And they're making sure that there is the look and feel is consistent and so on and so forth. So I don't think that is a real issue, right? Uh, in fact, it's more difficult working with people in the same agency network mm -hmm. and with people outside. So it's like, uh, <laughs> you know, people are more than type of thing, right? So, uh, mm -hmm. so you know, it's, it's in fact, there's more turf inside organizations than outside organizations. You work much better. I mean, that's been my experience. Uh, and uh, but and it's real, right? So because people have profit motives, they have targets to deliver, right? And they are therefore chasing their own specific tail. I don't think they're bad people, but they're chasing that tail. Uh, and you know, like I said earlier, I mean, I I don't believe inconsistency is the issue that lands on you, right? And I don't think there are any uh, you know the campaigns have got any worse, right? Over the years, it's not as if we have bad campaigns now, right? They're all, I mean fairly wonderful campaigns that come out today as much as they did 30 years ago, 25 years ago, right? But the fact is that, and my view fundamentally, and to repeat myself, is that perspective, brand thinking, uh, delivering metrics that matter, right? Which is that team, the client needs an A team that's chasing that for him, right? And that A team, he needs to build a partnership with that A team, right? and build the brand together, right? A lot of clients believe actually that agencies, you know, adds only so much value in today's market. Mm -hmm. uh, and therefore, you know, very often, unless you're working with, of course, Unilever, who treats everybody like a partner. And, you know, I'm sure many of us have had, had the experience of working with them and learning from that, right? But uh, that's not how all, age, all clients believe, right? Saving money becomes a bigger priority very often, right, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, so, I think they need a partner. They need an integrated partner. They need to work towards helping to build that system, right? Uh, and the stuff for is a real thing. Uh, and if clients encourage it, it's going to become and stay real, right? Hmm. Uh, Pat, you had a response to that. I do have a follow-up question, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, sure, Pat, sure. why don't you go first? Yeah. See, uh, like he said, uh, turf wars are very much there. In fact, I think turf wars as a, as a concept came from outside of advertising anyway. It came mm -hmm. from gangs, right? The guys who used to run a certain locality versus mm -hmm. somebody else. And there were those gangs. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly the same sentiment that happens across every industry, right? Now, especially so in advertising and within advertising agencies. And more than that, it is within creative. Within creative. Okay. Absolutely. Because creative, what is creative business? It's mm -hmm. insecure. It, what drives you to be creative is your insecurity. Because... Mm -hmm you don't know where your next idea is coming from, mm -hmm. right? Now, I have this particular client with whom I have got a relationship going, right? And think, you know, I've been handling it for the last two years. Uh, I've, uh, the, the brand is doing well. I've also been able to get some awards, so I'm very happy. And then suddenly the brand manager changes and somebody else comes in. And my first meeting with him, things go off because he is here to drive his agenda. And he tells my uh, CEO saying, look, take that creative guy out of this, get another creative guy in. 
finished. That is the end of happiness on that account for me and for the other guy because I will give him hell. <laughs> right? I will not let him touch it. I mean, blood has gone. There was so much of blood has been spilled in these kind of things. So turfers, turfers will happen. The essential problem with this business is that ever since Mr. Doc, uh, Sir Martin Sorel came in and chopped media from advertising, they got jacked, all of us. Let's be very, very clear about it. He is the man who destroyed this business. Okay? Completely. Because, and now what is happening? Media companies are getting the creative uh, backends. Every, cre every media company also has a creative shop. Then why, why do you have it here? Yeah? Because earlier it was all fine. We were all flourishing under the same wind, you know, the same roof. We were all together, right? The media, I mean, I used to sit, sit along with my media head and we used to decide on ideas together. Let's do an outdoor campaign, fine. And he will figure out a way of how to maximize his connections, get a fantastic thing going. Today, I will be, I will not even have a conversation with the media team in a way. Because what if he takes my idea and converts into something else where they will gain and I will not? Because the money is money today is with the media companies. The ones who gain, the, the ones who lose is, is the brand. Because the brands love it, love the fact. Now, very interestingly, and I must say this, you know, <clears throat> recently there was this very, very big business conglomerate, building conglomerate, so to say, which announced that they would want to work with an independent agency, right, to sell uh, the most expensive uh, luxury uh, apartments going around, 30 crores, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And finally, when it came to it, they said, look, we will not even pay you money. We will pay you a rate card. I mean, look, you want to move something which is a white elephant, which hasn't moved from whatever else you've tried, and then you're saying you will not pay an agency money. I mean, what kind of ridiculous environment is this? I mean, which agency will work uh, for them? No, but Pat, let me interrupt you. What's that got to do with the integration question? Because I was about to yeah, ask, you know, no, I'll come, is there I'll, something I'll, wrong with the way yeah, agencies yes, are structured? Because, because, see, the thing is, there is obviously the most, what is the most important thing of, mm. for a brand? The brand idea and the brand, the brand mm. world. Right mm -hmm. now, that brand world has to spread across everything that they do, whether it is in the PR business that they do, whether it's mm. in tech, whether it's in radio, okay. whether it's everywhere. Now, who can, I mean, look, I've got 35 years of experience. I know what a brand is. At least I know what a brand is. A lot of brand managers today don't know what a brand is because poor fellow has got five years of experience and the bugger has come from sales. Mm. Now, he doesn't even understand what brands are, let alone have a conversation about brands. Okay, so that is your, that is, you know, I understand the big FMCG companies or the big MNC companies have solid people right there. But there are so hundreds and hundreds of new companies that have come up, very successful companies, but zilch understanding of advertising or the brand. Now, mm -hmm. this brand feeling, this the image of that thing that you're supposed to, you know, wrap around a particular product from a commodity into a brand, that feeling has to spread across every touch point that you have. People don't have the skill. And, the, and unfortunately, the brand managers, because he doesn't understand that, he doesn't entrust that with one, one key person. There has to be one central pivot around mm -hmm. that brand and how that brand. The fact is, I may not have skill in, let's say, artificial intelligence or CRM or virtual reality or whatever it is that you want, or even unboxing at some other level or 3D immersive technology. I don't have those skills, but I know what my idea is. I know what my brand is. I can get people in. I can spend okay. look, at least the same idea in the expression of that particular medium or platform can go out, but it is never my, my role. It is always divide and rule. I mean, they've kept, so which is why you have a different tone of language, a tone of, uh, of the brand happening on one, one medium and something else happening on the other medium. At the, at the end of it, your brand suffers because there is no cohesive thing going for it anyway. Okay. So, so it, yeah. yeah. In fact, you know, somebody, I think it was Venkat, who mentioned an A agency, right? So, uh, Mark, uh, come in here and just tell me, would it make sense then to have one um, main custodian, uh, brand custodian, who, who the agency that behaves like a sieve or the funnel through which all the other services that the uh, brand marketer may avail can go through and he can be the main, he or she can be the main agency? Or does that uh, structure yeah, make yeah. sense? You know, uh, I think that would have been the thought behind the larger agencies creating so many verticals, you know, so that mm -hmm. they can, you know, act as that uh, single agency to give everything under one roof. Right. That would have been the original, you know, uh, intention. 
but uh, quite obviously it's not really clicked right okay now there have been some developments in terms uh, on the client side as well you know there have there are so many organizations today who have started creating a vertical within the organization called an imc vertical integrated marketing communication vertical it is separate you know and uh, that hasn't solved the issue either because now the turf war is between everybody mm. and the imc team so uh, it, it's quite a struggle there there's no clear solution it is it is just <laughs> it, it, it's 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 just the way you know the structure is okay and and it's over a period of time the kind of culture which is created in the in the organization the relationship which is there between the, the client and the agency all of this actually has to work uh, together you have to be able to create a a, a kind of an environment of uh, of trust for all the agencies to work together you okay. know and that's what i said I'll earlier another point there sure um so for example there are um, you know there is of course the traditional agency model where you have a different uh, vertical which does direct marketing a different one which does events and so on and so forth there have also been the, there are also the examples of colgate for example or ford right where a single agency has sort of been put together where cross discipline people are put together into one environment and they work together right towards one profit center right that works so we tried doing this i used to run uh, the equal under the one omnicom so we'd won this sap business for uh, you know ddb and omnicom actually more like and i was doing i was running the i was like the india representative for omnicom trying to knit together mm-hmm. what ddb had to offer and rap and tribal had to offer and uh, what fleischman hillard which is a pr agency had to offer and what uh, omd had to offer etc cetera, etc cetera, right and then we sort of put like a front end nose and i was supposed to be the nose for india at that particular point of time and we put together try to put together a structure like that but that, there again it doesn't work if you don't dismantle and put people together and make them work together so if you're still going to have one representative guy who's representing three agencies in the back each of them so instead of the client having the problem this individual starts to have the problem because the individual company starts to say i'm not making money i don't want to do it i'd rather do something else right for example so you need to dismantle create structures from scratch pretty much like you know for example title 7 is structured like that i'm sure pratap's agency is structured like that yesu seem to run a consulting company so that may be different structure right we've structured with people from different disciplines we've got brand people we've got digital people we've got crm people etc right yeah, can i just can i just button i'm sure yesu i mean pratap's got a st- similar structure yeah. as well Go sure ahead. but you know venkat i was just going to say you know but still everybody wants to be that funnel agency and everybody wants to be that main glue glue agency you know that sort of keeps all the other services and vendors together so yeah. then uh, is that a power play then uh, mark you know does the it's it's the, the client it's give- yesterday's kind of partnership right you had mm-hmm. one big agency partner right who got e- fixed everything for you today is like pratap was saying earlier one agency can't do vr as well as television i'm sure right that's that's not a viable right. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. you will have to outsource vr but vr is like half a percent of the spend if okay. one agency can influence 80 to 90% of the influential media for example hmm. then you've got a legitimate model going right they can knit together the balance 10% <clears> right that needs to be the model to work with right but okay. the clients need to respect that for that you need people who've seen everything it's not just about agencies because if the agency has individuals who are siloed themselves in the head right mm. it's not going to happen right yeah, yeah. so some of us who've been around for a while have actually seen multiple things mm. and are therefore in a position to add perspective like prasad pratap can and i'm sure yesu can and i'm sure mark can too though he's yeah. been out, right so yeah. um yeah. you know whatever so that kind of thing so anyway sorry i yeah. no no pratap will come to you in a bit what put it yeah. point Yeah. but yeah i also want okay let me just simplify this i'll shave it down to one question mark and then yesu and pat can come in uh, do brands have way too many custodians today uh, can i go not 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 really okay. not not really there are but uh, you know it's the way that it's managed you have to have uh, a system in place 
and 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 just just you know something to take on for from what Venkat was saying earlier. Mm. Uh, uh, this is an example I think all of us will be able to associate with. You know, uh, the brands. You know, for example, when you are making an ad, the brands don't. Uh, uh, directly interact much with the the production houses and things like that. It's your creative agency who actually gives you the options. You know, they go evaluate three, four guys, they bring them to you, and then you meet them, and then you do that thing. So you trust the creative agency to do that bit for you. So, uh, you know, as Lankar was saying, that's their mark. <laughs> <laughs> the purchase department gets it. No, 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 no. No, it's 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 the marketers who actually go through the entire thing. And the evaluation happens, and yeah. but the point being, there is a certain relationship, there is a certain trust which is there, and then you pass that on to your agency, whoever it is. So if that kind of a culture and that kind of environment exists, it makes things much easier. Else, yes, everybody is the brand custodian. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir, you had a point to make uh, before uh, Mark uh, answered. Me, then coming to the symptoms versus the cause uh, mm -hmm. trying to kind of give it another flip uh, see we were we were with a client about a week ago uh, mm -hmm. and we were trying to build an e-com platform for the client actually and the agency the digital agency um, of course you know there was a presentation which was going on and there was this whole thing about bounce rate so they said the average bounce rate is about 57 percent for the category mm -hmm. so my question to the client was that Imagine that you built a beautiful apartment for yourself and you're calling 100 people to the house warming, correct? And 50 of them come into the house and explore the house, 50 of them just step in and get out. How would you feel? Obviously, you'd feel horrible, right? So what is average funda about? So there are some meaningless jargons that the agencies have adapted to and they just roll that out to clients and the clients start believing that, okay, there is an average uh, bounce rate in the industry so my website can have a 57 percent bounce rate why can't you be the bloody best in class why should you why should you be why should you be focused on the average so my suggestion to the agency is that there are three things that i can actually tell agencies are meaningfully for them to make a difference particularly because i've been three years since i'm out of the ecosystem one is that uh, you know just get away from this obsession with this you know, this so-called jargons and this average, try and become the best in class in whatever you do. That's one suggestion that I can give to agencies. Second suggestion that I can give to agencies, again, coming back to the turf, et cetera, and there are two ways in which can I get handled. David Ogilvy had once said that the best talent is found among non-conformist dissenters and rebels. Let the agencies build a culture internally to identify, intentionally identify their non-conformist and train them and develop them. One, second thing, the third thing, send their leadership into a startup for three months. Let them go out, work with the startup and come back to the agency. Today, I can tell you personally, if I were to go back and do the job that I was doing, that agency will flourish in, 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 in leaps and bounds. Because my perspective is totally different. I was a bloody frog in the well. You know, I had to deliver the 2% from media. I had to deliver a number. That's the only thing that I knew. So what would I do? Obviously, you know, like, like we were saying that, I mean, I mean, if I have to be profitable, what do I do? I'm not going to give the best to the client, right? My idea has to be profitable for myself. So whether the client suffers, whether there's accountability or not, I my first priority is to be profitable. So when you start opening your eyes and minds to realities, you know, we were we work with we were actually working with a television uh, channel in Kerala, and they had cable operators. Sixty percent of the market was controlled. They had cable operators who would go to house to house to you know home to home to collect that cable money, etc. There is a relationship that they build with those guys. Now that's not been seen at all as an asset by anybody. So we said this is a great asset. So we made those guys actually go and sell gold loans to those houses. They said, okay, you're an asset now, right? You're going, you know those consumers, so you sell gold loans. So there's a client who came in. Otherwise, when you look at an agency, what you go and advertise on the channel, SOV, SOE, 30% reach, 40% for OTS, the game finishes actually. But when you see it in a different perspective, there are so many opportunities that come into light. So many of them that come into light and the clients will start benefiting out of that. 
either they create an ecosystem where they get startups into that company so the leaders cannot go get people like who have gone out of their you know are their radar and who are doing you know things which are different get them back into the agency and work with them for three months or not not as an employment or whatever but you know go and train those leaders in the agencies and and give them you know something which is like different or send those leaders back to a start to a startup and ask them to go and spend a couple of months there and come back to the agencies otherwise it's not going to change because these guys are absolutely insecure and i have personal experiences uh, uh, to the, to the panel i I've, i've gone through this personally right with the largest one of the largest agencies in the country you know their client actually told us that okay why don't you because you are a media guy why don't you review our media so when they had reviewing it the agency had a big problem they actually went to triple s of i to stopping us from doing our work because they were insecure they went to triple s of i they wrote to all the other agencies in the country then they wrote no no you don't you shouldn't allow him because he is he is a media i said i have nothing to do with media the client trust my expertise the client in the boardroom said that he is going to do whether you want to come and you know tell us what you want to do is your choice but the client ceo said that this guy is going to be with us finally they lost out on the bargain so i'm saying that they're insecure the larger they become the more insecure they become and i've seen that happening actually so for you to cut that there are only these three or four scenarios that can work get their non conformist give them a recognition so that these guys can challenge the rest of the guys entirely send them out the leaders let the leaders go out to some startup and then come back and this all obsession about this bloody average thing let them just get out of that and let them become the bloody best in whatever they do you know there is no bound, average bounce rate if your home is very good all the 100 people should come into house that uh, that's it thank you yes so no, some very interesting points and questions are pouring in so i would like to just bring two of them up and uh, you know they aren't addressed to anybody specific uh, no one of them is so a gentleman called krishnan r wants mark to answer this question Krishnan says, um, "Mark, isn't the onus of reintegrating as much with the client as it is with the agency?" That's the first question. And the second one is, Dr. Kishore Loy. He wants to know what are the feasible solutions to curb disintegration. I think that's a good, uh, good question. So all of this can sort of culminate in in the solutions because we know what the problems are. So, Mark, okay. why don't you answer Krishnan's question? Yeah. So, uh, so. Uh... i don't think disintegration is bad firstly i thought i i made it little bit clear in the opening statement and then in couple of places in the in the middle i really don't think it is it is bad there's nothing wrong in uh, uh, you know using a different kind of an approach hmm. you don't need to reintegrate the the hmm. the communication has to be very clear the communication and has to convey the right messaging of the brand in terms of the tonality in terms of the brand personality it's perfectly fine if if you operate with specialist uh, for any campaigns because you know today you don't run one campaign at a time mm-hmm. i might have three or four campaigns running simultaneously obviously i can't do everything for everything it cannot be a complete you know 360 for everything it ha- you have to pick and choose there will be some very niche campaigns which you do in a very very targeted way you may use only a very specified kind of a digital thing for uh, uh, doing that there may be some campaigns you know which which you will use two or three levers and there may be some in which you use everything mm-hmm. so yes you don't have to reintegrate everything but uh, you do have to create a kind of an environment where everybody works together that is the onus uh, which is there but, on the client but then mark why did silo become a bad word i i don't think it's a bad word there it's it's perfectly fine as long as between the silos there can be some small connections which make sure you know there is uh, mm-hmm. some exchange of information and that's the role which which the client has to play he has to make sure that the right information is given to all of them other than that if you have if you do believe that it is in a, it's 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 a, you know it's a environment where you need specialist which i do then there's nothing wrong in using specialist because they are the no, Yeah, go ahead, Venkat. I had one request for Mark to call hmm. it disaggregate and not disintegrate. ऐसे ही लगी हुई है डर लगता है. Can 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 I can I just add can, can yeah, I just yeah, add in? Yeah, sure, sure, Pat. Before yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the way I see it is like this. You know, in in fact, earlier in the in the beginning, I had said that advertising is today a, a rocket science. Now I want you to first consider this. Uh, See, see your brand 
or the purpose of your brand, so to say, as, as NASA launching the space shuttle. Okay, so when the space shuttle is being launched, and which is your brand, or your purpose of your brand for that matter, look at how a space shuttle is built today. There are 10,000 different people coming together, right? There's mm -hmm. a guy who specializes in the paint, there's a guy who specializes in avionics, there's a guy who specializes in gravity suits, there's a guy who specializes in diving and training, there's a guy who specializes in the tires, there's a guy who specializes in the ceramic tiles that they keep you know, on top of that thing. There's, there are so many, many, many people, the radar guys are different. NASA is not doing everything. NASA is basically bringing everything together and they choose the right partners. Everybody has, because today media has become so big. It is almost like there's just far too many things for anyone to do. But there is this one central guy who accumulates the right people and works for the brand. To me, that one person is the CMO, okay? Because the CMO knows what the brand is. Mm -hmm. No, Like I said, no agency today can take on everything because none of us have that skill. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't have, the, I don't have AR skill, I know. I don't have AI skill, I know. I don't have some other skill. Accept your deficiencies because and be good at what you do. This is a role of a lot of specialists getting together to form one common purpose. So to me, like I said, when I said rocket science, this is what I meant. That's interesting, Pat. I'll stay with yeah. you. And actually, anybody sure. else on the panel can take yeah. the next question. Uh, Anbu has sent a question saying, does setting up an in-house agency by stringing all the specialists together make sense since we're on the subject of solutions? No way. Why not? Because sure. there are, you know, I, I would find, imagine the guy who has to deal with me in your internal communication team. Mm -hmm. One, he has to be of my caliber, of number of years, needs to understand the place, needs to be from a craft perspective. I will bulldoze that guy in five minutes flat. Okay. Now, you can have junior guys do that, but what is the point in having junior guys? There are lots of other people who are skilled outside. I agree clients have more money today. I wish they give more money to agencies because they can hire a better client and retain better clients, mm -hmm. better, 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 better creative people. Mm. Because see, I mean, if you look at it, uh, the, the most important thing that a brand needs is the idea that fires the brand. Okay, and for for that, you pay the least money. I mean, and you expect magic to happen when you give. Uh, sorry for using the word bag of chips of you know uh, or peanuts. You choose it, but that is unfortunately that. I mean, you have no issue spending the best money getting architectural guys involved in building your plant, machinery being imported from Italy or Germany or France or whatever, right? You have no issues hiring the best charter accountant. You have no issues hiring McKinsey to give you the big IMC brand idea, et cetera, et cetera. But when the guy comes in to actually execute your campaign, you pay him the least. You fight for 50,000 rupees. You fight for 25,000 rupees. Give him but the money. He's the, guy. Yeah, so, he's the guy who's going to give you, change you from a commodity into a brand. He's the guy who delivers magic. But the magician is the one who gets the least money. How so unfair is that? And obviously, you have a ton of mediocre brands. Question, you have to answer that. My yeah. question on that is that I'm <laughs> the question to put up. But are we, are we to blame ourselves? I mean, have we done that for ourselves, actually? We can't blame ourselves now. We blame our, our ancestors. Blame, blame, blame our ancestors. Yes, the guys who, the guys who did, got us into this mess. For example, you know, there, there is a client calls for a pitch, right? Right. The clients and 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 we, I mean, when we were there, we would all go and pitch for the business, and we were all undercut each other. We said that okay, this agency is going to work at X. I'm willing to work at X minus something. I mean, exactly what we did. I mean, when to to win a pitch, and then. Uh, no, in the good old days, I think the place of I came with that, uh, you know, guidance and whatever, and they said, you know, can we charge a pitch fee? You know, can we pe can people not participate in pitches unless the client pays the, you know, idea fee? How many agencies came back and addressed to that yeah, actually? Issue, issue, everybody is hungry for business. Issue in 35 years of my business, only two clients have ever paid to pitch fee. Yeah. No, no, Pradap, that'd be different. I'm saying as an <laughs> ecosystem. No. Yeah. You are, you, you, no, you're... that that onus that onus is on the on the on the Agency. client. No, on, on the client. Suppose no, they, sorry, they, it's they, on the client. The together. client, the yeah. client knows the competence of the agencies that have come and danced in front of him. He says, "Look, this is the guy who's got the most potential. He deserves this money. I will go with the agency." Ah, but that so doesn't happen. Not, in the... that, that is the way it has to happen because, see, advertising is not the ideal business, right? I mean, it is a sham of a business today, right? It's all about money and undercutting and all sorts of wrong values. Right. 
the the beauty of this business is that it is the arithmetic that builds a brand let us not forget it whether it is scattered over 100 platforms today the core of a brand the idea behind propelling a brand into stardom lies with the agency and with the creative person and the strat guy who works together that is something which the client knows a lot of clients know that but today they also respond to bottom lines and purchase departments and all sort of funny things that have happened if you want it there has to be you cannot grow a plant if you don't pour water you have to pour water you pour kerosene into the damn thing the plant will die if you pour too much into it it will die there is an optimum amount of water you have to pour you have to pour that you have to give it can i add that is that? what yeah sure so i have uh, you know i have a diff, you know to respond to anbu's question actually right the same thing done to an outside agency partner is far more valuable right so do go back to saying you know building integrated agency partners to you know what pratap was saying right is an important value addition and within agencies you need to have and create what are called integrated people and I repeat that because if you don't have people who have perspective it's not going to knit it together right and that's extremely important i'll give you one example of work that we're doing um, you know we we sort of we're working on uh, you know what's called uh, a, a, a series called a decubed CA, which is essentially about de delivering differential consumer attention in today's world, right? All of us know about consumer attention dipping and right. Facebook's 1.4 seconds and everything else, right? Yeah. So we've done a C we're putting a series together and I'll give you one example out of it, uh, just to make the point of that integrated way of thinking, right? So there's one video that we've done out of that, which says, which is about the power of being first, right? And just to expand that, right? So for example, People who don't run a digital agency wouldn't probably know that the search ranking that's ranked first in, in an SEO listing gets 50% more click-throughs than the ranking that comes in second. Right. Right. If you have a string of ads on television, the ad which is first in the string gets so much more consumer attention than the ad that follows on because then the consumer switches out. Right. The same thing is true about YouTube. When you have starts, you started having strings of ads on YouTube. The same thing happens with the ad that comes in first, right? If you go into voice search, for example, where you know Alexa tells you one search listing at a time, people may not even hear the second one, unlike unlike in a visual search, right? The same thing applies to radio. The same thing applies to a lot of things, right? You need somebody who can actually tell you about this, right? across the media. And this is just one example that sort of has an impact on radio and television and on YouTube and on whatever else, right? But you need people who can actually knit something like that together and tell you about how to deliver differential consumer attention, which is one of the things that a client would be interested in doing in today's world, right? And of course, uh, you know, how to maintain the vision for the brand, which is the kind of thing that Pratap was talking about, for example, or Yesu was talking about, are things which, again, you need strong partners who are actually going to help you stay more, the course more, with them. More than, more than that, Venki, you also have to tell the clients that you need to spend money to, to achieve that. Yeah. You know, because it doesn't come free. Right? Yeah. All these rankings and, you know, being number one is all the money you spend. Yeah. Also, the, the thing that, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm sucking time, uh, Ashwini, and you can sort of tell me to shut up if I am. <laughs> but I want to make one more point. <laughs> Uh, which is this entire, uh, the world of clients also is actually full of short-termism, right? Which is the QSQT formula, which all of us know about, right? Uh, and therefore, uh, campaigns get evaluated for what they do in one month, three months, whatever. A lot of people know, right? And I'm sure, you know, many of you eminent panelists know that brands take a while to bid, right? You can't sort of kill them in one month and one quarter. Right. In fact, a lot of brand people, as in marketing people, need help from agencies to sell that argument to client uh, client leadership. Right, because that's a struggle that a lot of marketing teams are going through in many many businesses because they aren't able to justify. And the finance guy, and the procurement guy, wants them to show value, and they're struggling with what value to show. Right, and those are the kind of things that are happening with the business. And therefore, everybody needs to get together and fight for it together. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So, so yeah, we were almost out of time. You know, uh, I I will move towards closing remarks, but and questions are pouring in. But uh, I would like to ask everybody. You know, so finally, on whom does the onus lie? Because a lot of questions are pouring in, and they're asking us, okay, what about the accountability? Finally, who's you know, when when it's everybody's problem, it's nobody's problem. So who will solve it? 
Mark, you know, I want you to respond to all the stuff that we yeah. discussed earlier, including what Pat said earlier. He's, you know? he's the client. Yes, yes. He's so, the client. so, so I'll I'll start with that. You know, <laughs> yes. first, you know, there is there is a lot of discussion happened on the the the, the costs and things like that. So when we do hear pitches, and this is what I would really like to believe, if there is that one, you know, really differentiated idea which comes, uh, which comes, which really stands out, the client will pay for it. Absolutely, I agree. The client will pay for it. Hmm. The problem is if everything is very similar, or and there is so little differentiation in the whole creative thought which is there, the client will negotiate. <laughs> That's his job. Yeah. He has to deliver an ROI himself. So uh, uh, as long as there is that big creative spark which come, which which comes out, which Pratap was talking about, mm. I don't think uh, you know any client will say no. They will buy it. Yeah. Okay. That, that's that's yeah. the that's the first yeah, point. Except, which, except when it gets handed over to procurement, which is also oh, I I I love that. I love that because I. Hate those buggers. Yeah. <laughs> That's a hatchet job, right? So then there's no idea, right? No, it's like they, uh, how much does one kilo of idea cost, you know? <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So great, great. On that note, you know, I'd like to invite uh, very, very brief closing remarks. We need solutions. If there's one solution, however utopic it is, uh, put it out there and let's see if uh, anyone's listening. Uh, Venkat, it has to be a little more than, you know, nomenclature change from disintegration to disaggregation. Uh, we need practical solutions. So, if there's one thing you could change to help solve the problem we've been discussing for the past hour, what would that be? Okay, can I go first? Sure. Yeah, um, I don't know whether brands have it, but uh, I think there is something called the chief brand officer which is needed. Okay. Okay, uh, a guy who is responsible for everything that the brand does, not the chief marketing officer, because marketing is very, very different, but there is a chief brand officer that needs to be there. Because he understands how the brand should be seen across different platforms with the kind of money, right? He brings everybody together. To me, that is the solution. Like I said, today, advertising and the and the and the plethora of opportunities out there are, are a phenomenal, right? And it's too big for any agency to single-handedly handle. While as an agency, we call ourselves, and we are very proud to call ourselves as a mutant agency in the sense we keep idea in the center. And we mutate ourselves to whatever form it wants because somebody may need radio, somebody may need social, somebody may need digital, etc. Somebody may need exhibition and activation, right? We are ready for all that. But to me, <clears throat> there are just far too many things today, which, uh, and again, different clients need different things. It's not that, you know, for, so for an agency to equip itself across all the needs of the various clients, it's impossible. But from a client perspective, if I'm working with a particular client, I'd like to speak to this guy called the chief brand officer who tells me, or rather we agree on what the brand is. And we then we decide look, with this, money, this kind of money, this, these are things that they can do together. And it may come from different agencies, but there is a central point which decides everything, which doesn't happen today. Okay, thank you, Pat. Yeah, uh, Yeshu, what about uh, uh, your solution? I mean, my um, controversial view on this actually. <laughs> Go ahead. Fine. I think, uh, not, not controversial, but flipping the coin actually again, uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, uh, I think it's the agencies and clients come to all size and stature, all you know, type of agencies, all type of clients, and then come together to collaborate on one single element that I call the first party data. If there is a collaboration that they can do to harness first party data, forget about your second party and third party, first party, the data that belongs to the client, the first party data, if there is a culture to create that and harness that, a lot will start from there. A lot will start from there. For example, if Mark gets to know that in the last three years, how many people in Chennai painted their houses with uh, Nippon paint, uh, when he you, launches his disinfectant, uh, surface disinfectant, that becomes a first port of call for him actually, right? So there is obviously efficiency that comes in. Uh, you know, there is a there is great amount of uh, collaboration that comes in because there are different funnels that you create in harnessing data. You you create a you know sort of a collaborative mindset of working together between the agency and the client. Actually, I think this is my suggestion. Okay, thank you, Yesu. Yeah, uh, Venkat, why don't you go next, and then we'll conclude with Mark. So basically, uh, to my agency solutions remains the same, which is to have agencies which have multidisciplinary people and skills mm -hmm. who work together. Uh, to, and you need people who understand 
a fairly large amount of the ecosystem for them to be able to knit together a team, diverse team like that, and add brand perspective to it so that they bring back solutions which work with them. And on the client side, I believe clients need to, uh, instead of getting agencies to compete with each other, build partnerships with single, you know, significant agencies, right? And let them knit the service together for them so that they have a longer term relationship rather than a transactional one. Right, so those are the two things, yeah. Thank you, and Mark, uh, concluding remarks and solutions. Well, um, uh, I've said it earlier, I'll just mm -hmm. uh, quickly say it again. Uh, uh, a lot of the responsibility is with the client. We have to you know, ensure the our agencies work together. I can only state what's worked for us. We have agencies, you know, my PR agency will be talking to the media agency, the media agency is constantly in touch with the, the, the creative agency, the creative and digital agencies, which, you know, there's a lot of interlap over there. They are, you know, the creating campaigns for each other. Uh, so it depends a lot on the client itself. Uh, as I said, we, we have joint briefing sessions. We have joint workshops. We ensure everybody is on the same page. It doesn't need to be, I, I, I probably disagree with Venkat over there. You know, it doesn't have to be one large agency which knits everything together. Uh, it can be several small agencies, as long as, you know, the client is able to get everybody together and get them to work together. Silos are good. Let's keep with it. Wow. Wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think we're out of time. Thank you all for your precious time and all your frank inputs. Uh, on this note, I'd like to call uh, Anbu. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you guys. Uh, uh, it was a great evening having you all here. And uh, thank you, Pratap, uh, Venkat, Eshu, and Mark for articulating some pertinent points and uh, really being vocal about them. It was really uh, lovely having you around. Thank you so much. One thing is, uh, you know, I, what I like, love about this whole uh, webinars is we don't need to hand out any mementos for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> what a what a miss! What a miss! <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much. And Ashwini, I think uh, it was it was great moderating. Uh, you were great, really moderating the session, and uh, you know, you really kept it uh, integrated in that sense. <laughs> Thanks for taking. Thank you. Time. And I also like to thank Shrikant for you know kind of giving you the approval to kind of do this. So please do a thank him uh, on my behalf. Certainly. And I'd like to thank uh, Shravel Roy from uh, WAF Digital uh, for having helped us to manage the session on the technically on the background. So Shravel, if you can hear me, uh, a big shout out to you and your team for having done a great Th job. Thank you. Thank you. That I think was seamless. Yeah. I'd like to thank you all for tuning in and we will continue to bring in more exciting stuff. So keep watching. And I'd like to thank my uh, executive committee members from the Ad Club for helping me put this all together. Thank you and see you all. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thanks a everyone. lot. Thank, thank you. you. Lovely session. Bye. Right. Right. Stay, stay, Goodbye. Stay safe. Yeah. Thank you. See you guys. Bye. Bye.